Boy, crikey, these tractors are overdue for a wash. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Deep South Sheep and Beef. Just getting a bit of uh, sustain on here today before we start lambing. We've already started lambing, unfortunately. Not to plan, but it's happened, so we're dealing with it. But uh, yeah, just trying to top the feed up a wee bit, heading into September. September, October tend to be, sorry, I'll just watch a little yard. Tend to be our uh, pinch months, you'd say. That's when we're least likely to meet our feed demands, so we're just using a bit of this nitrogen fertiliser to kick things along a wee bit and hopefully fill that hole. So it's um, sustain, which is urea with a special coating that's supposed to stop it from volatilising, which means the nitrogen disappearing into the air. The whole idea is that we don't have to wait for rain and then go out and spread it just beforehand. We can chuck this stuff on whenever we want. Costs a wee bit more. Um, a little bit more and it's got a little bit less nitrogen in it, like a tiny amount less. But we reckon it's worth paying the extra anyway. So convenience factor to be fair. We're just going to chuck it on and don't have to worry about getting rain. I think you've only got 48 hours with nitrogen with urea before it starts disappearing. Although that said, it's going on at 50 kgs to the hectare. So to put that in perspective, it's uh, 5 grams per square metre. So it's not very much. The thistles have started growing, so the grass must be. I was going to do this paddock, but uh, yeah, she's just a wee bit long in here. This is first year young grass, it's a wee bit open, but it grows like crazy. Look at the sheep, can't even see them. Over there. So, uh, two things happen here. One thing is the sheep are very well fed on this, which is good. But the second one is the wee lambs when they're born. But this is actually quite long grass here. It actually acts as a bit of shelter, which is quite handy. Oh, check it out, would you? Got big blue out today, doesn't even know the bulk is there. Get about three ton of urea in here, so it's not really struggling very much. Here we are, back on day two. Beautiful bloody day today. What a ripper. Just finishing off this, uh, this job. Got another load to do after this one. She's getting a wee bit tricky though, because uh, yeah, there's two ewes down there with their lambs. There's lots of that around, and I've got to try and spread around them. We're getting there. Well, there's another one down there, you see. We're getting her done, but uh, yeah, it would be nice to have, to have not had them lambing yet. Um, people might wonder why we haven't gone sooner. It's, it's a bit of a balancing act with soil temperatures. Ideally, I wouldn't be doing this for another three or four days. We're coming out of winter. We want the soil temperatures as high as we can get them in order to put this stuff on. But these paddocks here, I'm, I'm just sitting there thinking in another three or four days, there's actually no way that I'll be able to drive through these paddocks without causing a hell of a mess. So, uh, we're well, not in the track of spreading fertilizer anyway. So, yeah, we're, we're getting it done today now.
turned out to be a bloody beautiful day today. I really cannot growl. Should be getting a good response from this stuff anyway. So, um, back to why we're doing it. Yeah. One of the biggest things for lamb survival is feed on hand. Um, <coughs> helps get the soil a bit drier. Well, ground conditions I should say a bit drier. It helps the ewes to milk, which obviously helps lambs, and it gives the ewes more energy to get them out, which means less uh, what we call dystopia, which means difficult birth. Um, just a slow birth, the slower the birth, the slower the lambs are to get up. And yeah, it just means that there's feed on hand for them when they, when they start eating grass too. Now I know nitrogen fertiliser can be a bit of a uh, sticking point for some people. I know it's not well liked for some people. But it's pretty good stuff. Nice new super shed here. Yeah, um, so the government has set a limit of 190 units of N per hectare per year. Now to put things in perspective, last year was a bad year for us. We had a really bad spring, so we used a fair bit then. We thought we used a fair bit. Try and keep things going, try and keep the stock fed. Then uh, summer we weren't too bad, we didn't use a lot over summer. And then of course COVID hit and we thought we were going to be stuck with all these lambs and cattle for a long time. So the simplest solution, because buying in feed is not really an option, was to use sustain or use nitrogen. We use sustain here. Um, anyway, we wound up averaging 63 units for the whole year per heat day. So we're still sitting at about a third in a bad year of what we're allowed to use. And in a normal year, we'd be looking at maybe 20 to 25 units per heat day per year. So, like I said before, we're doing 50 kgs to the hectare, so I thought I might just show you what 50 kgs to the hectare looks like. So here we go. My wife is going to kill me when she sees the kitchen scales in here, but that's alright. So we're teared on zero, got a wee cup up here. Grab a handful. We'll see how long it takes to get to five. Well, that was a bit of an overshoot. There we are, we're on zero. Try this again. That is five grams. If you just have a look at what's in here, that much. Not very much, is it? That's how much we put on per square meter at 50 kgs to the heat day. Oh, there's some big girls out there, isn't there? Triplets. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe, it really helps me a lot with this channel, and uh, we'll see you next time, next time we're going around some music at Lamington.